When it comes to hurricane season 2020, we've already had a record breaking year and now the peak of the Atlantic tropical season is now upon us. So far this season, uh, there's been a record setter with 17 named storms and we're only halfway through hurricane season. Meteorologist Rebecca Beer explains there are some major storms that happen around this time of the year that did some major damage. Happy September 10th. It's the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. And what that means is if you look at the entire hurricane season since we started keeping records, typically today we have the highest number of tropical storms and hurricanes. That's what's represented in the light yellow here on, on this date any given year. That's what we're looking at. Now when you go down to the orange, that's just hurricanes. So it's still the peak when it, you're looking at just hurricanes. When you're looking at major hurricanes, there are a couple of minor peaks as well, and it's about average for peak time. But Floridians have a little bit more to be concerned with, not necessarily today, but more so in October. While the highest number of named or numbered systems out there in the Atlantic season is today, when we take a look at major hurricanes that make landfall in Florida, it tells a different story. Since 1851, 17 major hurricanes, which is a category three or above and typically do the most damage, have hit the state of Florida. Of those 17, 10 of them have been in the month of October. Take a look at some of the notable landfalls in October in Florida. Opal, Michael, Gladys, Wilma, Floyd, Inez and King. Now, several of these were before storms were named, if you're looking at the records there, but it's no doubt that October is unfortunately a dangerous time in terms of hurricanes in the state of Florida. Then moving on to what's going on out there right now, we have a lot to track. We've got Tropical Storm Paulette and Tropical Storm Renee. Now, they're going to remain out over the open Atlantic, but it's the other areas developing that we're keeping a pretty close eye on, and here's why. We've got storms rolling off the coastline of Africa, and since Tropical Storm Paulette and Tropical Storm Renee went north, it opened up this more southern zone for development, and it could mean that we could see these tracking closer to the United States after they develop. We have one system with a high chance to develop over the next five days, 90% in fact, and another system with about a 40% chance, a medium chance to develop over the next five days, and those are Cabo Verde storms. They can be very dangerous and deadly. Then when we take a look at the Gulf, these are all headed away from us, thank goodness, but still messy weather in the Gulf. We've got one with a low chance to develop heading towards Mexico and one with a medium chance to develop. And the system's crossing just to the south of the state this weekend and then moving into the Gulf where we've got those warm waters and low wind shear and likely chances to develop. Looks like it's going to be a busy season. We're certain to run out of names and have to move on to the Greek alphabet.